Hello, everybody. My name is Samir Parekh. I uh, am a assistant professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm a part of the CLL group here. Um, I'd like to tell you something about uh, CLL and how it is diagnosed um, and, and what our current approach is for patients with newly diagnosed uh, CLL. Um, approximately 20,000 patients uh, will be diagnosed with CLL in the US in 2019. And the vast majority of these patients, that is approximately 70 to 75% of these patients will have an incidental diagnosis and will be early stage at the time of their initial diagnosis. And at the current time, most of these patients do not meet indications for therapy. Our general approach in the management of such a situation is that we follow patients over time, that is once every three to six months to look for evidence of progression of disease. And once patients meet criteria for therapy, we will typically initiate uh, uh, a discussion about what sort of treatment options are available. We have now been able to identify several prognostic markers that allow us to individually predict which patients are at a higher risk of progression. We use a combination of five variables, including the patient's age, the rise stage at diagnosis, serum beta to microglobulin, the IGVH mutation status, and the CLL fish profile to be able to define what the risk is of progression of their disease. This is called as the CLL International Prognostic Index. And based on what this index tells us, we're able to categorize the disease into low, intermediate, high, and very high risk of disease progression. We currently have a clinical trial that enrolls all patients with newly diagnosed CLL who are seen within two years of their diagnosis and who do not meet indications for therapy. All patients get these baseline tests done to establish what their CLL IPI risk profile is and based on that, we enroll patients on this particular trial. Patients in the low and intermediate risk group are assigned to an observation arm where they are seen once every six months, and the intent of this particular observation arm is to define the risk of progression. We also collect research blood samples on these patients over time to understand the changes that happen in the immune system as well as the genetic profile of their CLL. In patients who have high and very high risk of disease progression according to the CLL IPI, we randomize these patients into receiving either acalabrutinib, which is a second generation Bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor with or without obinutuzumab, which is a second generation anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody therapy. These patients continue with these treatments for at least two years to try and get to a minimal residual disease negative remission. 